Hey guys, how are you from the Art Gear Guy? Today I'm going to do um, a review or a testing really of all of the different products that I purchased from Timu. Now, you'll see some images coming up on the screen here of the various different products that I purchased. There was like a roll <coughs> of watercolour brushes. Then there was two packs of watercolour brushes, a, tw a 12 set and a 13 set. Uh, there was two individual brushes and then there was uh, a watercolour brush holder. Um, now, I purchased these. This was the first time I'd ever purchased on Timu. And I, uh, so, it, so the first time you ever purchased with them, I think they provide like a deal for you. And all of these were packed into this deal. Now, together, all of it, I'll have the prices and what have you over on the written review, but together, all of it was really, really well priced. And But what I wanted to do was, it wasn't just a case of testing the products to make sure whether they were rubbish or, you know, whether they were usable, but also because I wanted to make sure that the platform was okay. Now, I did a similar type of thing when I very first ordered from AliExpress. It was my first experience ordering from AliExpress. And I wanted to make sure that that was a safe platform for, for me to order from in the future and for you guys as well. And it absolutely was. Um, so far, Timu has been exactly the same. So when I ordered the products, they got here really fast. I think it was only within about a week and a half, uh, which is really quite fast considering these are coming from, most of them I think are coming from China. Um, and also as well, the you know the cost like i say was relatively inexpensive now that does that does determine on what the quality of the products are like which i'm going to show you here now i've already made this video but i had to delete it because i came to the the unnerving conclusion that i am much more of a marker and water or sorry marker and colored pencil reviewer in terms of my expertise and my ability to determine what is a quality product and what is not. With watercolours, although I've been using watercolours now for about five years, and I have my own collection of brushes, which I'll show you as well, but because of that, I I found that I, I didn't really know how to test brushes. I, I, I wasn't sure what type of... Um, tests you guys that are hardened seasoned watercolor artists want me to do to prove that the brush is any good now i know that uh how much water a brush holds i know that's one test i know also as well about the the individual strands coming out of the you know it's shed and that type of thing like i say i've had these brushes now for just over a month i think just a little bit longer i've used them on various different watercolor sketches that type of thing and big bigger paintings they've been absolutely fine well some of them have there's been no shedding of some of them as well and but we'll get into all of those details in the actual review um so i hope i hope that for you guys that are seasoned watercolor artists i'm you know helping you understand whether this is a quality product or it's not but don't forget the price that i got these for was this introduction deal so Prices could increase after you've got your introduction price. But I know, based on the fact that I'm inundated with 20% off, 60% off deals from Timu all the time, that if I go and buy another product, I can use one of these codes. So they're constantly giving you codes to reduce the price of a product um, to, to get people to keep buying from it. In terms of safety, in terms of all of that, I've not had any of my details stolen. I've not had anything taken out of the bank that shouldn't have been taken out of the bank. Things like that. All of that is, a, you know, so far, absolutely fine. And like I say, delivery as well. So let's get into the review. Let's get into testing and showing you how these brushes uh, work. And I hope I do these tests justice for you. I, I know I'm a little bit... Put it like this. I think if, if you give me 10 of the top... The, the top 10 uh, colored pencils that are on the market blindfold me. I think if I use that pencil on a piece of paper, I could tell you what pencil that I, I'm using in my hand just by how it feels, how the, 
the barrel fields in my hand, things like that. So that's a level of, you know, understanding of colour pencils that I've accumulated over the years. I don't have that really with watercolour brushes. I know the type of watercolour brushes that I like and love. So this is kind of like my, uh, my collection of watercolour brushes. Um, I have a lot of these um, silver brushes from the SAA. Uh, I have a few other like Da Vinci brushes. This is a, 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 a 20 Da Vinci uh, Kalino. Um, I've got a, a number eight Kalino from Da Vinci as well. I've got a few uh, Aquafine brushes from Dale O'Reilly. They're really good as well. Uh, obviously a few Ron Ronson uh, Hake brushes. Um, I have a few um, Paul Rubens uh, mop brushes. They're really nice as well. And things like that. So that's kind of like my level of brushes. I don't have any brushes in my collection that are like two or three hundred pound. I just don't have that. Uh, I know the different levels within watercolour brushes. You've got your Sable, Kalinsky Sable, uh, Red Squirrel, things like that. And they're all at the top end. And then you come down to synthetics and nylon, those types of uh, hog hair and things like that. And a lot of that is down to environmental or uh, animal rights, that type of stuff, because of the Kalinsky Sable and the Red Squirrel. So there's a lot, there's a lot of different things. I'm not going to be talking about all of those things in this video, but... Uh, I am aware of it just to give you uh, an insight into my knowledge of my limited knowledge of, of watercolor brushes. So um, I hope this helps you. I hope this gives you a guide of where kind of like the level that I am with regards to watercolor brushes. And so I can give you as much detail, as much information as I can about these brushes that I've purchased from Timu. All right, let's get into it. OK, guys, so. As you can see here, I've got two cameras set up. I hope this works out for me. Um, I've got one here set up where I'm going to show you the water and dipping the brushes into the paint. Now, I know that's not really going to tell you much, but hopefully it'll show you how much water some of the brushes hold and things like that and uh, how they absorb the paint. And then I'll have this camera here set up and I'm just going to do some, you know, I'm not painting a picture or anything like that. I'm just going to do some washes, some lines, just to give you an idea as to how well the brushes hold the paint and stuff like that. So as I, as I mentioned to you earlier on, this little um, watercolor brush was part of the the the, the thing that I bought, uh, and I picked all these things individually. Uh, it wasn't like all of these things, all of these brushes, all of these sets, and were like part of a spontaneous giveaway. As a newcomer to Timu, I just had the ability to select however many products I wanted and then I think it was something like 60% you got off or 80% you got off I, I can't remember exactly what it was uh, I'll have those details over on the written review I'll have to go into my account and look at it but uh, all of those details will be over there uh, if you're interested in that now like I said some of the some of the brushes the sets that I got was um, this set of 12 uh, they're just really, really bog standard brushes, but I think I've used them over uh, the last month and I have um, got on okay with them. I think they would be okay for beginners, students, stuff like that, especially the detail brush, the, the small line brushes. They're really nice. Now, this set of brushes here is a 13 set. It um, I, I like these brushes. Both of these sets here are synthetic nylon brushes, but I wanted to, obviously these, it says on the package in here that uh, these can be used for acrylic oil or, or watercolor. The only thing I don't like about these is the, the length of the handle. Um, but I know some watercolor artists and some painters like really, really long handles. It, give, it gives them a lot more gesture, gesture and stuff like that with their, their arm movement rather than their hands. But again, I've used these in different uh, paintings, and uh, but I'll get into that when when I show you how how well they absorb and stuff like that. They're not a bad set. Two individual brushes that I got were these two um, like mop brushes. As you can tell here, this is a number six. This one here is uh, a synthetic mix, so it has some sable in it, 
and then this one here is just uh, a synthetic hair two slightly different hair uh, brushes here I'm going to show you how they perform like I say I hope what I've used here is I've got a, a, a glass and I'm hoping that the because it's in a glass there's no ripples or distractions or anything like that that it's going to show you the brushes absorbing the water and then obviously I've got my palette out here which I normally use for painting uh, and so you'll be able to see how the brushes absorb the paint mix the paint that type of thing so let's get into it no ordinarily I would have I use these as my water containers for when I'm painting but I don't think they are clear enough and for demonstrating this and incidentally the paper that I'm using here is uh, Saunders Waterford St. Cuth sorry St. Cuthbert's Mill Saunders Waterford rough it's a 140 pound paper it's uh, really really nice got a nice texture to it so uh, that's the, the, the paper that I'm using here for these tests okay so let's get into it so first brush I'm going to show you is this uh, number six this mop brush like I say I'm hoping the camera's going to pick this up so you can see here it's it's just dry I'm just gonna swirl it around here and let it absorb some water I'm now going to just squeeze the water out just to give you an indication of how much water the brush is absorbed now another thing that I was uh, told by a watercolor artist friend of mine is that when you lift the brush up the fact that it doesn't drip is a good sign um, there's not a lot of water coming out of the brush the brush is absorbing and holding that water in the brush so as you can see here with this brush it, it's it's working quite well there's hardly any water dripping out of it so let's take a look at it and uh, mixing some paints I should have kind of like activated these paints before it started they're they're a little bit dried out but hey ho okay so I'm just going to use my jar over here for cleaning the brushes because I want to keep the the glass as clear as I can get it so you can see me here just using the brush dipping it in there I'm mixing it round on this palette. This palette, incidentally, is the Jackson's palette. It's uh, ceramic, really, really nice. Okay, now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a little bit of a wash here, so you can see there that I've basically just allowed the brush to absorb as much water as it can, dipped it into the the yellow ochre there, and I'm just going to apply this to the the paper. So. Let's make sure I'm in frame. You can see there how well it's applying the, the, the paint. I'm going to do another dip here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how um, how long or how much paint this actually holds just by doing some some line work just bringing it down until it dries out until it runs out of paint As you can see, I'm not putting very much pressure on this, so it's just 
um, a little bit of pressure. Uh, just trying to make sure that I keep even pressure all the way throughout this. But as you can see here, it's still... going strong and it's it's kind of like now starting to dry out you can see there the whites of the paper starting to come through now because it's starting to dry out I would say that's about it. It's starting to dry out. There is a little bit more paint in there. It can go. You can see here that there are some little hairs coming off this. Uh, but that is to be expected. It is a, a new brush. So it is to be expected a little bit. But you can see there how well the, the brush applies the paint. And how well it uh, holds the water as well. I actually really like this brush. When I've been using it in a painting format. Uh, I've used it for... Um, my skies and then I'm pulling little bits of it out let me show you actually hopefully I can get this brush clean enough to do this so if you wanted to when I was using it for like skies it does a really nice job of pulling out the paint for your clouds and things like that. But I really like this brush. And I think, um, given the price that I paid, with this one brush alone, I'm quite happy. I'm not saying that I would spend this, you know, the, the amount of money on this one brush. But so far, so good. And like I say, I really enjoyed using it on the, um, on the paintings that I did. I haven't forgot about the roll of watercolour uh, brushes that I got either. I'm going to leave that to the last. But um, So we have this red one next. Uh, you can see here this is a number 8. So I'm just going to dip this into the water here. Allow it to... Because all, all of these brushes are bone dry at the minute. So when you lift it out... A little bit of dripping and that's to be expected because this is a synthetic brush the other brush there the uh, number six brush was synthetic sable mix so that's why it absorbed the water and held it a little bit better from my understanding if you have like a kalinsky sable or a red squirrel uh, brush whenever you do this type of thing it's just going to hold the water in there ready until you're well you know about ready to use it but there you can see the dripping has stopped. So again, I'm just going to do the same type of test here with this brush. I'm just going to dip into... Uh, this different colour here. Uh, this is raw sienna. I have my little chart here that I, I have for that particular palette. So let's just mix it up here on the palette. You can see there, it mix it it mixes the the paints really nice. Just let's put a little bit more water into it there. Bring some of that blue over just to make it a little bit olivey green colour. I love using this palette, this uh, palette from 
Jackson's really really nice okay so the brush is well loaded up uh, we're just going to do the same thing just going to show you what it's like doing a little bit of a wash And you can see there's a little bit of a hair. Obviously, I wouldn't do this if this was a painting. I would wait until it's dry, but... You can see... It does quite well. So, let me just load this up again. And see how, how far this goes. I know, I know this isn't a very scientific testing, guys, um, but when I've been watching other watercolour artists and how they test the brushes, this is basically what they do. Um, and I don't really like doing that. I like to try and come up with my own things. For example, when I'm doing reviews, um, I will never watch a review of a product unless unless I've done it before um, and the reason why I do that is because I don't want to subconsciously use information from other reviewers not because not not because you know they might be wrong and I don't want to go down that route it's just because I want my reviews to be my reviews I want I want them to be 100% everything mine uh, nobody can accuse me of plagiarism on an art level. Um, and so I just completely stay away from watching reviews until I have reviewed the product myself. But with regards to these brushes, I don't think I'm really doing anything um, by watching these watercolour artists and how they test their brushes. I don't think I'm really doing anything wrong. So you can see here it's now starting to run out. There it's starting to run out down the bottom here. So I would say that's as far as this brush would go as well. There is a little bit more paint in it. I could probably go over it or like continue it on a little bit, but it is drying out. So again, just gives you a little bit of an understanding as to how they hold the water and how they operate okay so next up i'm going to be using uh the the number 12 here from the the actual 12 set of brushes that i showed you earlier on now these like i say these are not the greatest brushes i do like the little liners that are in them the little uh the, the smaller detail brushes i think they're really good they're really handy for um detailed work that you might want to do on your artwork this number 12 um and you can tell you know num the number of brushes and stuff like that this is number 12 uh round but when you look at uh, number 12 from another range it might be much much bigger than this so you've just got to take these numbers with a pinch of salt anyway you can see there i've allowed this brush to absorb there's not there's not really much going to happen with this but I'll just do the same type of test. Like I said, this is a synthetic brush, but there's not much to this brush. It's not a massive um, brush. It's not going to hold a lot of water in any, in any case. But let's uh, pick up some paint and we'll do uh, a little bit of line work with it, a little bit of testing with it. Okay, and you can see me there just mixing these colors up to a lovely muddy color i will change this in a second okay so i'm just going to do a little bit of a wash Uh, 
And again, when I was using these brushes to do a little bit of a painting with, <clears throat> like I said, the little detailed brushes were really, really handy for the detailed work. I really enjoyed using them. This one here, it's kind of like neither here nor there. It's a little bit, um, but in terms of the quality of the brush, it's it's not terrible. It's definitely a brush that uh, uh, kids, if you get so, uh, if you got kids who want to do a little bit of watercolor, watercoloring, a set like this would be much better than the uh, brushes that come in some of the watercolor pans or what have you sets that you would get for kids in any case. And you're not going to be spending a lot of money, but at the same time, although they're not fantastic brushes, they're definitely not brushes that you would give to a watercolor artist. Um, but if you handed these brushes to a kid, then that kid is going to get a good experience with watercolor, enough certainly to allow it to continue on with that particular um, medium. So I'm just going to do a little bit of... Um, line work here with it just as I did with the other brushes obviously it's a much smaller brush so I'm not expecting it to be but I've just filled it up there but it'll give you um, a little bit of an understanding as to how much water it holds and and when you consider it is like a, a synthetic brush it's not it's not the worst and it is only a small 12 here but there you go it's it's run out there um, which I think if you had a, a like a Kalinsky sable brush about the same size as, as this not a number 12 because I think if you got a Kalinsky 12 you'd be paying about four or five hundred pound for it but if you had a Kalinsky or a red squirrel or something like that, uh, a natural hair inside the brush, the same size as this, you would definitely see the difference in terms of how much water it holds, the, the amount of paint that it lays down. Now, I'm obviously not going to test all of these brushes or show you all of these. So I'm just lifting the like the one brush out of them uh, and showing you what they're like. So next up is this uh, 13 set. Uh, I'm just going to lift out, um, actually let's see if, let's do there, number 12, okay there it is there. Okay so this is there, number 12, I'll just show you in comparison to the, the, the black one, fairly similar in size, so obviously just the, the handles the difference. Again, just let me get some water into this. So you can see there, you can see what I'm talking about with the dripping. And now we're going to load the brush up with some paint. and do a little bit of a wash. Um, I feel that these brushes do hold a little bit more water than the black ones, even given that this is relatively similar in size compared to the, the black 12 but I just feel that these hold a little bit more water than the black set but again this type of set here would be really really good for a student uh, a teenager getting started in watercolor that type of thing definitely I would definitely not say that these are artist grade brushes these um, 13 this 13 set and the and the 12 set um, Whereas the other two brushes are the number six and the number eight. I think it would be up to the individual as to, it's really difficult for me to say, I think an artist could use those brushes. So let's do the same. 
test here, see if this one holds a little bit more water. So it does hold a little bit more. But you can see there, it is definitely starting to run out. Okay, so I would say that's about it. So that that's the test there for um, this number six brush was over here. You can see there what it, what it was producing. The number eight brush for here, um, again, a synthetic brush, synthetic mix over here. Uh, number six, sorry, number 12 brush from the uh, 12 set, and then the number 13 brush here. You can see roughly what these brushes are able to uh, produce. Don't forget, I tried to absorb a little bit of paint up with this brush. Uh, I should have dried it out a little bit better before I did that. But you can, you, you can see generally what these brushes are capable of doing or not capable of doing, whatever the, 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 the case may be. Okay, so I've got a blank page here from the same... Uh, watercolor pad now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the brushes in this set here now again I've used this set throughout uh, some of the paintings that I've done uh, I'm not going to show you every you know test every brush here because they're pretty similar in terms of quality all right the way through them but you can see here what this set is so we, we have here uh, like a, a number two liner Really nice little brush, good for detail. Uh, we've got a couple of, uh, this is number five round. Uh, this is number two round. Um, a much smaller, this is a 0 0.2 round. Then we got this mop brush here, which is a, a half inch mop brush. Um, we got a filbert. I've never used one of these before until I got this set. Um, then this is what they call a scruffy. This is number 14 scruffy. Uh, but it's a really nice little scumbling brush for detail in trees, that type of thing. They call this a, a slant. So this is number 12 slant. And then you've got these two little brushes here, which are like um, miniature little hakes, really. This one here is a three quarter inch. Uh, feather and this one here is um, a one inch flat so all in all my opinion on this on, on all of the stuff that I got here um, this black this black number six and this roll here for me personally this is worth probably more than what I spent on all of it now like I say, the, the other brushes there, I'm not 100% sure. They definitely shouldn't be used by artists or wouldn't be used. or You know, an artist wouldn't get much work out of those. But I definitely think that they're um, of the quality that... With the black set, you could give those to uh, kids who are into watercolour without giving them something terrible. Uh, like something with those camel hair brushes that you get inside sets sometimes. Those really, really cheap, horrible sets. Um, they're going to put a kid off wanting to do watercolours, but if you get a set like the black set, they're going to have a, a much, much better experience and much more likely to go on and pursue something like that. Same with that 13th set, the, the brown set, the, the long handle set. So I just want to show you how some of these brushes here perform and then we'll call it a day. So I'm just going to show you the number five round, the uh, half inch mop, and I'm going to show you the feather and I'm going to show you the, the, the one inch flat. The others are all the same. They're all pretty similar. Actually, I'll show you the, the scruff, as scruffy as they call it as well. Uh, this is like a, a faux leather. Really, really nice uh, feel to it. I, I love the roll in itself without the brushes even in it. So I'm really happy with that little roll. So again, just let me show you. Uh, this is the number five round and you can see here um, a 
holds the water okay but these are the these brushes are synthetic so again let's get in the end of the paint here do a little bit of mixing and I'll show you a little bit of a wash with this don't forget this is number five round just bring this bead all the way down Okay, so let's just dip it in there again, and we'll see, we'll do a little bit of line work as well with it. So again, not, not putting a lot of pressure on it. Just doing exactly the same type of test that I did with the other brushes. And remembering this is a number five round. So in comparison to that 12 round that was in the black set and even the, the brown set, you can see there it's, you know, it's holding a lot more paint. So we're starting to now, it's starting to now kind of like dry out. It's where it's at the point now, I think, where you would certainly dip it back in. So I'll just leave it at that. This little mop brush here, really, really nice, actually. Uh, this is a, a half inch mop brush. You can see there, it's it's holding the water really quite well. Um, let me just... Get a little paint here. I'm not going to do any line work with this one because it's, it's... That's not really what it's for. I'm just going to do a little bit of a wash here up the top. You can see there it's it's given a relatively smooth coverage and you know there's like I say when I was using these brushes from the roll other than the the, the um the number five round I didn't get any like hair coming off them or shedding or anything like that and even then with the number five round it was only just a little bit but you can see here the really nice coverage that I'm getting here with this little mop. Um, and I think if you have a little set like this uh, for out and about, it's it's fantastic. It's perfect. This is a little scruffy brush. So I'm going to put a little bit of green on this and show you what I would use it for. I think I think I'm just out of frame there a little bit. Okay, so I would just I think this is the type of brush that you would um use for trees. Or for um, if you wanted to do a bit of splash work, I think you, you're going to get nice effects from it if you do splash work. So I think that's what that little brush is for. Uh, next we got this uh, one inch flat. Again, it's just like one of those hake brushes. I think it's... Um, a really nice little brush to have in your set if you're out and about doing some you know landscape painting or something like that so let's just get some paint on it 
absorb some of it up. Just going to do a wash with this one. Just going to do it over here. So like I say, if you were out and about, if you were out doing a, a landscape painting, this would be the perfect little brush just to do your sky with. Um, you can see there the coverage that it gives. And with a lot of like roll sets that I've seen that you would buy online or something, um, for planner painting, I've not seen any with these um, like small baby hake brushes. I'm not saying you can't get them, I'm just saying I've not seen any. Um, I'm sure there's some out there, but I just really like this set. So I'm running out there now, but you can see there another really nice smooth coverage. And then finally here we have this uh, three quarter inch feather. Now I was when I first started using this, I was really surprised at the technique that it gave me, or the like the effect. So I, I'm going to use I'm going to use some green on this one actually. So with this little feather brush, you can see the way the, the uh, brushes splay open. So I know this desk is uh, wobbly a little bit. I apologize for that. Um, so this th this little brush here would be perfect if you're doing some foreground grasses. Um, I wouldn't use them for the, the middle or the background because it's too, too detailed. But... Um, you can see there, it, it gives some nice effects for this type of thing for if you're doing grasses. If you wanted to just do like a, like a flat layer, like I say, the, the, the one inch flat is going to be best for that. This little brush here, because of the way the, the, um, the bristles splay open whenever you use it, I, I definitely think it's best for that. You know, if you're doing fields, something like that in your landscape again, you know, like a farmer's field that's being used, this would be a really nice little brush to use. Um, and that's really about it, guys. So listen, all in all, um, with with all of the brushes that you get in the, that I got in this set, and like I say, the, the prices will be over in the written review. If you want to go and see the prices, just go ahead and do that. Um, it is a deal. I think the the um the long handled brown set the 13 set and the 12 set of black um brushes i think they're perfect the black brush is perfect for um kids that are getting started in watercolor and the brown handle one is a much better set for students getting set this set here um i really really enjoyed using it i think it's a really interesting set to have if you're out and about doing some plein air uh, i think it provides you all the brushes that you're going to need for landscape painting or botanical painting when you're out and about and uh, i really love this set i think this set on its own is worth the price that i paid for the entirety of it um and then like i say with the the number six and number eight brushes rounds or mops whatever you want to call them um this number six I really love and I've used that a few times in some of the paintings that I've done since uh, I got these brushes. This number eight one here isn't too bad but it's not as good as this number six. But that's to be expected with this number six being a synthetic mix. Anyway guys I hope this has been beneficial to you. It's been really difficult for me to make this because I'm not 100% sure I'm giving you the right information or providing you the information that you need. But um. This is kind of like what I would look for in a watercolour brush and so far this set for the price has been well worth the money. Timu as well has been perfect. I've not experienced any difficulties or anything like that with them so all in all a, a really good experience. If you've got any questions please leave them down below in this uh, comments section. I'll definitely get back to you and I'll uh, answer your questions as best I can. 
and also as well if you're not already subscribed to the channel um if you find any benefit in the channel and the videos then please subscribe J just means that you're going to get a notification or anything like that the next time i put a review out or do a giveaway you'll get a notification so you won't miss out on it and also as well follow me on facebook instagram and twitter on those social media sites i put a little bit uh, of my own personal stuff, my home life, my dog, those types of things. So if you're interested in getting to know me a little bit better, those platforms are the best platforms to follow me on. All the best, guys, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.